the formidable Australian centre Mal Meninga. Meninga's provided the inspiration that's taken St Helens back to the top. Man of the match in the Lancashire Cup final. Peter Sterling is renowned all over the world as the best scrum half in the game. He's the player who really makes Hull tick. Man of the match in the Yorkshire Cup final. So tonight's game is a sort of unofficial decider between the county champions. More importantly, for St Helens, the championship is still well within range. Hull want a top four place in the premiership. They'll start thinking about Wembley next week. Right, tonight's team, St Helens then, almost back to full strength. Neil Holding, he's back after injury. So too is the league's top goal kicker, Sean Day. Gary Ainsworth, on loan from Lee, plays his second game at hooker. Andy Platt returns to the second row. One or two injuries for Hull to contend with, but at least centre James Lulai passed a fitness test. Steve Evans continues at standoff. Good to see Trevor Scarrett fit again and playing in the front row. And in the absence of Gary Devorty, Steve Knocker Norton switches to loose forward. Well, we joined the first half with 13 minutes gone. The score, 2-0 for Hull, a Gary Schofield penalty. The commentators are Keith Macklin and Vince Corelius. He's got three of them to beat. And Sterling eventually got him. That's all right at the play of the ball. Both go for it. Meninga. Pinner. Beavers, and it's charged down. That could be 6-4. So it's Pinner around the middle. Another great break by Pinner. And a lovely pass. What a good break, Peters. Ledger. Can Ledger make the corner? Yes. What a try. What a brilliant break this is by Pinner. And what a, what a beautiful ball. Peters come on to that. This is a great pass to Ledger, and Ledger strolls in, no evidence at all to him. Down it goes. Barry Ledger, 22nd try. Sean Day now, his second chance at goal. 106 goals so far this season. A difficult in-swinging one to make it 107. A good one! A great try and a great goal to follow it. 6-2. Well, just three minutes later, and Hull were back. Sterling feeds, takes it, Evans, Lulu I. In the line, Campbell, good pass to Schofield, good pass to Jeff, oh, lovely try, he must be in, a beautifully worked orthodox try, straight from the scrum, classic rugby league. Yes, this is a lovely pass from, from Sterling, but the, the most important factor here was Campbell coming in from full-back and making the extra man. This is what caused the overlap, and then it's brilliantly taken, that's a great try. Here's Schofield taking the kick himself. Kevin James, ninth try. Wide. Scores level at six all. Well, shortly after that, an infringement by Peter Serling, of all people, gave Saints possession. All penalties for Helens. <laughs> Illegal feeding. Mr. Beaumont's mind making it clear. So Saints in a marvellous attacking position. Burke, the first drive. No, Ainsworth goes himself. Holding. Pinner. Peters. Platt. Close to the hole post. Scores tied at six all. Pinner working a move to Haggerty. crowd enthralled by this holding Pinner having a tremendous game but he's smothered there scoops it back referee says play on Platt holding still Saints go driving forward they're eight yards away Wellens was up in the line they're moving it with Pinner Pinner decided not to throw it that time we're on the sixth tackle they might go for a drop goal they might go for a high kick 
Peters looks if he's going for the drop. Meninga, though the high kick for Ledger to chase. Oh, what a gift! What a gift! An absolute gift! I thought, I thought Meninga had overkicked this, but Dan O'Hara, he's a test player and he made one awful mistake. Phil Vivas will never score an easier try. Dan O'Hara dropping that, all Phil Vivas had to do was pick it up and drop over. Day's kick misses. Gawley. So Saints back in front and quickly back on the attack again. Oh, come up very quickly. Burke. Oh, he's through the front row, forward through. Good inside ball, holding. Neil holding, going away like a jackrabbit, but O'Hara's across with a superb cover tackle. But they keep the momentum going. Platt, Pinner. Day over a lovely pass by Pinner. Cut Maninga out and made the try for day, and we are seeing some wonderfully classic rugby league tonight. The best the game from offer. This was a beautiful pass from Pinner. He cuts out Meninga and, and Day strolls in in the corner. Beautiful try. Sean Day took that well, but Pinner made it intelligently cut out Meninga here's Day to try to kick his 108th goal that looked all the way what a good kick yes yeah, Saints really motoring but all of a sudden it changed again still hold close to the line Two St. Helens players still on the ground. The kick by Sterling. High into the sky. Wellens underneath it. A lot of people. Oh, have it. Get the ball out now. It's a try. Certainty for O'Hara. This is Sterling again. The typical Aussie tactic. Do what they call the bomb. And he's bad handling. You see the opportunity, out it goes, and it's a walking day in the corner for O'Hara. Gary Schofield from the touchline. A marvellous goal, and this game tonight is giving us everything from the textbook and manual of good rugby league. Five minutes to go to half time. Saints Meninga, back in the whole half. Floated out. Pinner, this time a short one. What variety in the play? Platt gets it out to holding. Holding going the blind side. He's seen the gap. Ainsworth, Peters, Platt, Gawley. Spectacular stuff. An attempted drop goal. And it's over. Phil Reavers, an astute bit of thinking. Yes, this is a smashing ball again from Holden. He's seen the big gaps on the outside and they're flinging the ball about. There's plenty of space there. Another great break by Gawley. Ainsworth comes behind. Everything's on here to switch the play. And why not? A drop goal. It's another one. It makes the total a lot better. Well, marvellous stuff from Nosley Road. A bit of an understatement, really. And believe it or not, it gets better. Well, the first half details. Hull got more scrum possession. St Helens won more penalty. But the overall time in possession reflects the balance of the first 40 minutes. But at 17 points to 12, you wouldn't rule out Hull. Kevin Wellens. Tackle just inside the Hull half. Ainsworth. Pinner to Burke. Oh, 
holding Haggerty was coming on the first but holding went round him still holding St Helens moving this ball around as if it was red hot Meninga what a good ball Club took it Vivas Vivas is going in so Phil Vivas his second try and another beautiful move What a ball here from Pillar to Platt. And Platt straightened up beautifully, took it beautifully inside to Vivas. And this is a walking day. But St. Helens are playing absolutely great football. Phil Vivas, who came across with Mal Meninga in the package deal from Brisbane. And a fine player in his own right. That's his eighth try of the season and his second tonight. I would, have, I would have thought at half time that the penny had dropped since Helens in the first half have been attacking out wide. Day kicks the goal. 23 12. And like you say, they've continued in the second half because Hull are bunching. Now they'll have to rectify this as they're going to be in great, tr great big trouble tonight. St Helens have now topped 20 points in their last five consecutive games against Hull. But Hull, if the pattern of these games continues, are not finished yet. Great job. St. Helens, of course, very, very anxious to wipe out the memory of that 46-24 drumming at the Boulevard and to go back on top of the lead. Here's Pinner. Burke. Beavers. Well taken. Beavers kicking ahead. Beavers and Platter there. It's bounced kindly for... No. It was almost Haggerty dribbling through, but Saints in full cry for another one. It's Fred Eagles, Meninga, holding. The crowd roaring and rising to their team. No, hand the ball over. No, one more tackle. One more oh, tackle, but attempted kick through. Now run away. Sterling after this, and he was unlucky. Great pickup. Peters. Holding. Haggerty. Lee side refusing to die with the ball. Meninga. Meninga himself. Meninga a try. Oh, he strolled through. Made the gap. And ample through it. Malmaninga's 21st try of the season. Well, this is the whole Marcus year class, the perfect dummy, and he just strolls through, but really and truly, it was bad tackling. The giant policeman from Brisbane, he's been fairly quiet tonight. That's what St. Helens paid all the money for, isn't it, Vin? It is indeed. He's such a big, powerful man. And you know, if you don't use him, he still causes a threat. It's like possessing the hate bomb, really. No, that hits the upright, but Hull a long way behind. I wonder how Arthur Bunting feels about that. rampant at the moment what can you do about it well they've been showing it from the start all they want to do is play football and we're allowing him to do it a little bit 
we, our, our defence is a little bit ragged at, at the present moment, and unless you stop the ball, then uh, Saints will do that to you. St Helens now really motoring after this revenge win and Leeds hold on the top of the table looks like being short-lived well we've not seen much of the old maestro knock and Norton tonight and his opposite number Harry Penner he's having the proverbial blinder wearing your jersey <laughs> in the 13. Well, it was an old jersey, the jersey I love wearing, I absolutely love this. Here's Pinner again, playing like a man inspired. I think Harry was still watching him. I've seen him Lovely just... pick up on the burst. I saw him just before the game tonight and I said, Harry, I said, have a good one tonight. And he certainly, he certainly done what I asked him. There's another piece of the repertoire. Beautiful rubber kick to touch. Ten minutes gone in the second half. And the subs warming up just to warn the lads on the field. Hull have got an awful lot to do to get back into this game. And that was powerful stuff. Paul Rose, Norton, and a knock off. In this duel between the two half-backs, up to date, it's certainly a points victory for holding. And there was an amazing statistic during the first minutes of the second half. St. Helens had possession for four and a half minutes out of the first six. Hull had only 33 seconds. And how Saints made that possession pay well that looks almost like a rugby union push over and holding was on hand to pick it up peters wellens there's always somebody in support but that's not forward well holding stole that ball from uh, sterling at the base of the scrum that was good halfback play peter sterling with bandage head the referee mick bowman carrying a, a full muscle but keeping going well, that scrum collapses in a heat and Mr Bowman says reform oh no that's why in the old days he used to call them the steam pigs holding Vivas Barry Ledger Ledger Peters, Meninga, Day, yet another try, yet another beauty. What a brilliant piece of play this, hold it inside to Vivas. Vivas comes across and Barry Ledger comes inside. Talk about tiptoe through the tulips, there's nothing like it. Beautiful ball to Peters, a nice long ball again, and we're in Grace's day in the corner. Sean Day's second try. A hard kick from the touchline, but Day will be heartened by that try. Oh, and again he hits the upright. That try coming from the first scrum against the head. Well, we've heard what Arthur Bunting thinks about this. Billy Bennion 
must be absolutely, as they say, over the moon. Well, Billy, you're shouting yourself hoarse at the moment, but this must be terrific for you. Terrific, John, but you've got to keep at it. You can't play and, and be silly like we were in the first half. But we've been more positive the second half. But at times, we're just playing it about silly instead of being positive and taking it, settling and working again. But, uh, no, I've got to be pleased with it. You know, we've had some ups and downs, but, you know, this is this is what we wanted tonight. A lot of people have talked about Mel Meninga, but yeah. Vivas isn't having a bad game either, is he? Two superb players for us, without a shadow of a doubt. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, John. Gawley! Peter Gawley roaring to the halfway line. What another superb ball from Pennant, and Gawley straightened up on it. That was great play, that. Meninga again, effortlessly moving it to Wellens. Ainsworth holding St Helens, moving on to this ball as if they had magnets on their hands. Meninga, Pinner, Haggerty! Inside the Hull half, inside the Hull 25 indeed, where most of this half has been spent. St. Helens have had second half possession in a ratio of seven to one, just over seven minutes to just over one minute. And look at the way that push was launched. That's, that's a sign of confidence when they, they're knocking them back like that and that doesn't half dishearten you. And possession too. Again, the short ball. This time for Haggerty. Haggerty wanting to get up and play the ball. Holding, Pinner. Holding again. Burke. Everybody wants it. Everybody's hungry for the ball. Still, St. Helens going for the post. Ten yards to go. That plunge was by Platt. There's the high kick by Meninga. Nicely taken by Luluai under a lot of pressure. Luluai, Norton. Sterling, that's a nice ball. Muggleton. Hull must be desperate to get another try to get back into this game. But it's all going St. Helens' way at the moment. Harry Penner having the game of his life tonight. The main difference between these sides is that Hull are bunching an awful lot. And St Helens have got Pinner and Holden, who are great players, and they can see the gaps on the outside, and they're really exploiting it. They've got men straightening up and running into these gaps. And this is creating a ball from Pinner again to Peters to Haggerty. Nobody can possibly stop him. Oh, he knows it too. Roy Haggerty makes it six tries in six games, and it was again a piece of pinner magic that started it with the pass to Peters. This is this man pinner again, and what a ball, a marvellous ball. On to Peters, he times his pass perfectly, takes Kemble out of the game, and there's no way they're going to catch Haggerty. Haggerty says it all, he puts his hands up in the old salute. The crowd all round the ground applauding, I suspect, not merely that try by Roy Haggerty, but a scintillating display by St. Helens. I think this pinless, Harry Pinn has put this show on, especially for me tonight. And the two Hull subs come on, but they're rather like King Canute telling the waves to go back.
Day kicks the goal. And Mick Beaumont, the referee, has struggled against a pulled muscle. Mr. Bowman, what's the problem? I pulled a muscle, calf muscle, in the very first minute, and I just can't walk now, no mind run. I think you nearly took the decision at half time, did you, to come? Very, up? very nearly. But the game was going so well, that I was very reluctant, as you can well imagine, to leave it. But it's not fair on the players now for me to stop out there. It's also a bit quick out there, isn't it? It's very quick, but very enjoyable, very enjoyable. I wish I could have stopped out. Thanks very much. Well, we have a bit of a hiatus now while the deputy referee goes to put on a distinctive jersey and the touch judges change. Mick Beaumont, the referee, has gone off with a full muscle. Mr. Frank Tickle, a member of the local referee society, has the yellow flag and Mr. Jeff Lightfoot becomes referee. I think the only way Hull are going to have a chance tonight is when they brought the two subs on, they should have took nobody off. Well, we must remember Vin, as Mr Lightfoot takes charge now, that it was the boot on the other foot at the boulevard with a 46-24 scoreline for Hull, and St Helens getting their revenge tonight. Peters... Holding. It's one of those nights when every man on the side has his game of the season. Pinner. Burke. Holding. Meninga. That rebounded. Oh, and rebounded nicely for, for Pinner. Who else? Peter's going to make another try. Weavers, they'll keep it moving. Meninga, Ledger. Yes, says the touch shot. Ledger took the flag, but he touched out first. Well, what can you say about this? This was rugby league at its very best. Everybody straightened up in the ball. Even Ainsworth gets into, gets into the act. A beautiful ball to Vivas. They're all straightened up on the ball. Out into space again for Ledger. And Ledger in at the corner. Barry Ledger joins Phil Vivas and Sean Day with a brace of tries tonight. Almost four minutes passed without a try. Saints there sending on Sean Allen for Steve Peters. So St. Helens have used their full 15. The two subs on both sides have used their full 15. St. Helens. Well, Hull got 46 at the Boulevard. Here's Haggerty. Haggerty. And I'm quite sure that what's going on in the mind of the Saints players now is they want to go a little better than that and wipe the slate clean in the match that takes them to the top of the table again. That's Sean Allen. Can he get one 
himself, not quite, would crown his game. Peter Gawley. Holding, puts it up, it hits. No, a touchdown, and that's the second kick of the day. And Neil Holding, well, Neil Holding has scored some spectacular ones. That one was a thank you very much. Well, they really had Holland a tremendous pressure here. Keith lofts it up, the old bomb, Campbell misfields. Nice little bounce for, Keith, for Neil, and down he puts it. A nice easy try which he thoroughly deserves. The main difference between these teams, like I said early on, is some telling the lion really deep and they're running onto this ball. They're doing the basics right, and this is what rugby league football's all about. Another goal for Day. And that's what St. Helens wanted. They've overhauled the score by which they were hammered at the boulevard. Hull, remember, are in the semi-final of the Challenge Cup. It can be a very, very funny game, rugby league. Just one minute left. I beg your pardon. Ten minutes left. Luluai kicking ahead, a chance for him to score. No. It's a dropout. James Luluai had a chance to dribble over. Well, this was a rare mistake by Penner, and Lulai came on, got his foot to it. A bit unfortunate here, but unfortunately, you know, when the game's going against you like it is for Hull, nothing seems to work out right. Campbell. Hull coming back now bravely. They've been at the wrong end for most of the game. They're trailing 47-12, which is quite a hiding, but they're keeping going. Norton. Patrick. Sterling puts it up, a melee behind the post, and not dead. Well, that was the old bomb again from Sterling. I mean, that's what the Australians are famous for, but tonight I think we've shown them all that English rugby league football, played like Saints are playing, this is the best game in the world. Billy, you were talking about mistakes in the yes, first half. You've not made many this half. No, thank goodness for that. I've gone on to them a bit at half time over them because uh, we did so well and then we just give it away with stupidity. But it's, it's nearly been a point a half this, this half. Has it a point a minute this half? Is this well, your best performance? I think really, you know, we've got something, we've got a uh, stigma to rub out from early on this season when we took half a side there. And we've proved we can beat a good side with full internationals on and put 40 on them. That's what's pleased me more than anything, John. Thoroughly pleased. And a great game of rugby league. Oh, well, I think, you know, I would love to have a Granada television here every game if we can produce this, because every time they've been here, we put, we put something on and... Uh, Get it to us! You know, I'd love to have them here week in oh, and week out. Right, Billy, really, thanks very much. Thanks, John. Well I'll uh, not finish yet, though. Sterling. Seven minutes remaining. Hull looking to retrieve some scraps of dignity from this marvellous game. 
A cross kick by Sterling. Now can Saints break from their own line and get one? Not this time. That man Pinner's there again. He's catching everything. Over. And he's driven back. Probably the whole side got a bit of satisfaction. Puckering and Norton out of doing that. Burke. Meninga. Holding's distribution lacks in half has been first class. He's really ripped them apart. Campbell. Uh, running into a brick wall. Well, now I've had much more time in possession. 17 and a half minutes against. 26 in the game, but Saints have made more use of it. Much more. Penalty to play the ball. Haggerty hooking his foot round, but boy, Haggerty not all that upset now. Here's Sterling. Luluai going well, got it out. That could be a try in the corner. No, he's a foot away. Sterling, nice shot. Oh, it's not going for Hull, and then it didn't go for Schofield. Five minutes remaining. Ainsworth holding Meninga. Day. Well, I think it would just put the icing on the cake if Saints were to get one from inside their own 25. Pinner, man of the match, inevitably. Yes, it's a, a good penalty uh, to Saints. Definitely a good selection, Pinner, man of the match. He's certainly my man of the match. Mind you, Holdings ran him a good second. And the, and the rest of the Saints side a good third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eight, down to 13. Here they Ellen's inside the only five punching a bit now. I think they realize they've done enough. They're all stood back. Neil Holding saying, Does anybody want this ball? Well, it's the young, fresh sub former who comes for it. Holding Pinner, Pinner threw himself, knocked forward, and a knock on the substitute Allen. What a beautiful combination then by the two men of the match, Pinner and Holding, showing all the skills. Beautiful to watch. This is absolutely superb rugby league. And it's hardly surprising that it's a whole man who tops to tackle count tonight. They've done little else but tackle, certainly in the second half. It's Patrick the Hooker with 27. Even more than Peter Sterling, who had the highest tackle count last season with 40. Just three minutes remaining, but I don't think anyone will want to go home, and no one will want this game to end. Well, perhaps the whole players might, and Arthur Bunting. But in fairness to Hull, they've contributed. Pinner again. Holding. What interception! And this could be Gary Schofield passing it on. And James Lulawai touches down for a consolation try. A rare mistake here by Holden. Then he comes, Goldfield. Beautiful pass within, out to Lulai. And he says, thanks very much for that, we needed that. Well, who can begrudge Hull and James Lulai that try? 
Hull on the wrong end of a fearful hammering of a kind they gave to St Helens at the Boulevard. But Hull have given their all in this game too. Schofield pops over the goal. 47-18. Well, some consolation, surely, but uh, really no chance at all of a miracle recovery for Hull. Puckering. Hull finishing strongly. Penalty. Well, what's Sterling going to do? Go for a brave last-ditch try. Will affect the scoreline and could give a little boost in confidence. To hold. We've now had 40 minutes of the second half and 40 minutes of rich entertainment. Now it's running clear. Hulls still in possession. Patrick. That's the substitute for Proctor. Norton, Evans, Evans got a hat-trick at the Boulevard, but he's been well watched tonight. Norton, Sterling, good short ball, Kemble was onto it, but so was the defence. It's the last one in the sequence, it's Sterling, and it's dead. We've had one minute of added time. All they seem to have hold to offer really are these bombs. And, that, and that's not rugby. Rugby is the game that St. Helens are playing. Standing deep, passing it well and all running under the ball. Running nice and straight. This is the finest team performance I've seen all season. It's absolutely superb rugby. Haggerty. Meninga, they're getting rid of the ball. And this is the substitute, Sean Allen. Well, when that hooter goes, there'll be thunderous applause round this ground. Here's Beavers, the cross kick. It's Ainsworth, and it hit the bar and went behind. Ainsworth was chasing that, trying to get on the score sheet. Saints running to the last. We've had two minutes of added time. The time, of course, taken for Mick Beaumont with the full muscle to hand over the refereeing jersey to the linesman, the touch judge, Jeff Lightfoot, Muggleson. He's been kept fairly quiet too. Tonight, there's the hooter, and the curtain rings down on one of the greatest attacking displays this game has ever seen, let alone this season. Hold provided their share, particularly in the first half but St. Helens were unstoppable tonight. Absolutely brilliant game. They all played superbly, like you say, with Pinner and Holden absolutely outstanding. For Hull, I thought Sterling had a great game, but they'll have to do a lot better than they've done tonight if they have any chance in the Challenge Cup semi-finals. But I would think you'd be the first to say a terrific team performance. Yeah, great performance by the lads. Uh, all 15 tonight was brilliant. You seem to come out really fired up at the start of the second half because there was only a few points in it at the interval. Yeah, well, Hull's a good side, aren't they? And they played well early on. Um, but we got things right second half and I thought we played very well. Now, that's put your level at the top of the table with Leeds. What about the championship chances now? Well, it's all... I think it's we're in with a shout now. Um, I think we may have frightened a few sides tonight. Now, the crowd were chanting Billy Benyon's name. How do the players feel about that? <laughs> well, we all think the world of Billy. And I'm more than pleased, more pleased for him than anybody on tonight's performance. Well, Harry, I think the last thing we ought to say is thanks very much for coming out in your bare feet. Yeah, well, it doesn't matter that. <laughs> Thank you. Go and have a warm bath. Right, thanks well very played. much. Well played. Thank you. Actually, Vince said afterwards that a St Helens loose forward can do anything he wants, and uh, it certainly was Harry's night. Well, what a remarkable match that was, and St Helens fans will be delighted to know they've got Hull again on Sunday at Knowsley Road, but that is an A-team match. Uh, the news tonight is that Saints are tying up a deal to go on a summer tour to New Zealand. And it'll be interesting to see whether or not Neil Holding goes, because as I understand it, he's agreed to play in Australia this summer. Well, before we 
concentrate on other things. Let's just wrap up the final statistics uh, from that really absorbing match. Neck and neck in the scrum, uh, only 10 penalties in total. Now that's the lowest number in any match anywhere this season. So a great advert for the game in more ways than one tonight. And according to our match analyst, Phil Larder, Rugby League's Director of Coaching, who's with us every week, the time difference in possession, which was uh, over seven minutes in St. Helens' favour, well, that's an unusually big margin.